this video, we're going to take a look at creating a basic structure. We're going to start with a primitive cube, and we're going to take this cube and generate a building. We're not going to add a lot of detail to it at all. It's just going to be very simplistic. I'm going to switch over to the channel box, and let's zoom in to our object. And the first thing I want to do here is change the scale. I'm going to click on scale X and we'll just enter a value of 5. Then I'm going to hit the tab key to not only go to the next value, but also enter the value that I was on. And so I'll hit 10 to get the Y set, and then we'll go down to the Z, and I'm going to add 5 there as well. And now this time I could either hit tab or enter, and that will complete my scale. Now we have a much better shape to our building. Next, I want to scroll down in the channel box and take a look at the construction history of my polycube. Here, I can add more geometry to my building so that we could bring out some extra detail. Right now, we just have really large faces. We can't really do much with that, so I want to subdivide those. Now we can always subdivide our geometry really at any point in time during our pipeline or our modeling process, but now is a good time because I have this construction history still attached to my polygon object. I'm going to go to my subdivision history and go to my subdivision width, height, and depth. Now the other reason why this is a good time to do this up front is because I have my scale values still intact and I could use those values to drop them in to my width, height, and depth. And by matching those, I'm going to get nice, evenly spaced quad geometry. And that's what we're looking for. So for my width, I'll enter 5. The height, we'll use the scale Y, which is 10. And then my subdivision depth, matching the Z, will go to 5. Now I've got nice, evenly spaced quads. The next thing I want to do is move my pivot point down to the bottom of my object and then lift that object back up so that it's sitting on top of my grid plane. The main reason to do this is really just kind of a sanity thing to make sure that we're actually modeling on top of zero. So that top of that grid there is going to be zero in the Y. So we kind of use that grid as a ground doesn't really exist, it's just artificial, but placing stuff on zero allows me to kind of mentally know anything above zero is above ground, anything below zero is below ground. So it just kind of makes sense. So I'm going to press D to go into my edit pivot mode, and I'm going to hold that down. Then I'm going to hold V. So I have both keys selected right now. And notice when I hit V, I've now entered snap to point. And then I can take the Y axis and just drag it down. And the only thing it's going to snap to are going to be the vertices of the scene. So in this case, just my polygon cube here. And I can just drag that all the way down. And that just ensures I'm at the very last vertex of my model. And you can see my pivot point is now at the base. Next, I'm just going to press X. I'm no longer in my pivot point mode. Now, just by hitting X, I'm snapping to grid, and I'm going to raise it up in the Y. Now, we can raise it up even though we don't see the grid there, but it is still moving up one unit in the grid. But I'm going to drop that right there so that it is now sitting at zero on the grid. But you can see that the actual translate value is set to five because that pivot point was actually five below my zero. It was sitting at negative five. It was an offset of negative 5 because we started in the center of our object. Now we're sitting in a good place. We can move forward. And the next thing I want to do is take a look at the first floor of my building. And I'm going to switch to edge mode. Double click to get that entire edge loop there. And typically the first floor of a building is usually two levels or two stories. So I kind of want to do the same thing here we'll make it just a little bit larger. Now, if I select the edge loop, I want to get rid of it. If I just hit delete on the keyboard, that will get rid of the edge loop. 
However, it does not get rid of the vertices that were associated to that edge loop. And you can see in my pre-selection highlight here that those vertices are still there. The edge is still being divided. This is not good. If I go to vertex, there's those edges. These vertices that are sitting out there are called non-winged vertices. They're not attached to enough edges to really be legitimate. So they're kind of floating. We don't want this. These faces right here, they're no longer quads. They might look square or rectangular, but they have more than four sides. So these are now n-sided pieces of geometry. We don't want that either. So I'm just going to undo this. Let's bring that edge loop back. And instead of deleting it through the delete key, what I want to use instead is edit mesh, delete edge slash vertex, or control plus delete. Now when I right click or look at my pre-selection highlight, I can see those edges are not being divided. They're nice and solid. I don't have any non-winged vertices there. This is good. Those faces are all quads. Even though it's a big rectangle, it's still a quad. Exactly what we're looking for. Let's take a break here, and then we'll come back and add some more features to our building.